Hey everybody, welcome. Today I've got a special guest with me, Nathan Walker, who is one of the core members of Building NativeScript. Welcome, Nathan. Thank you so much, Alec. And today we got a little something special. As you know, NativeScript 8 just recently launched and we're going to show you how to migrate from NativeScript 7 projects to NativeScript 8 projects. So Nathan, um, how should we start this off? We have tried to simplify everything with migrating to new versions with NS Migrate. NS Migrate has been, or TNS Migrate as some may know, has been around for quite a while. We did a lot of tooling with it in 7 and luckily 7 was the biggest shift and the update from 7 to 8 is really pretty minimal. Um, but you do get a lot of new things, of course, with 8, uh, the biggest being Webpack 5. But uh, the simplest thing is just to run and actually install the latest CLI, which would be um, the 8 series CLI. You can npm i-g native script um, should pull the latest. If for any reason you do ns-v and don't see the 8 uh, install, you can always do npm i-g native script at latest just to make sure it uh, does force pull down the latest and you can always do ns-v to confirm that you're on the latest CLI so that's probably the first step okay so I've started this command npm i-g native script and right now it's going through the process of fetching that and installing it while that's installing I'll make a couple quick notes about the CLI in general there's often a lot of confusion around versioning with the CLI and core and runtimes um, there's a blog post that's stated on some of this, but it's always worth repeating. The CLI is often updated to work with the latest tooling. So latest Xcode, latest Android Studio, and those are generally build tools uh, and that sort of thing. They're often uh, not directly related to core and uh, often not even directly related to runtimes often. So it's pretty typical with NativeScript that you can always use the latest CLI, especially if you're aligning yourself with the latest build tools all the time, installing latest Xcode, installing latest Android Studio. It's really the CLI that's going to enable most of that uh, compatibility with the latest tooling. Um, core, uh, being just a JavaScript library, can often work on older versions. So the latest NativeScript CLI works to build and deploy six, seven, and eight projects. And we, uh, on our side, as well as on our team, all use the latest CLI to, to work with on a day-to-day -day basis, six, seven, and eight projects. Generally, the CLI is safe to always update to the latest if you are kind of keeping up to date with the latest uh, build tools, you know, Xcode and Android Studio. Okay, wonderful. So right now I did install NativeScript and I ran the NS command to check the version and alias for NativeScript. How do we kick things off and install a NativeScript 7 project so then we can upgrade it? So this is a great question. So the app templates are actually, they've always been open source. A lot of people have never seen them before on GitHub, but there is a repo. It's NativeScript app templates under the NativeScript org. And all of those templates are actually in NPM packages themselves. And you can install any version of those app templates at any time, no matter the CLI that's installed. Um, you can always just use typical versioning when you uh, target that template. So we can do that right now. We can do NS create. All right, sure. And we'll just name it, we'll just say old project perhaps. And for this case, we'll create a NativeScript 7 project and we'll update it to 8. So do dash dash template. And then before we put the template name here, let's go to that GitHub repo. So it's, if you want to pull it up, it is under the org. You can search actually in the, I believe that'll scope it to the org. I think down below there's a, there's a search that's just for the org right there. Search for app templates, app dash templates, I think should find it. There they are. So these are all the NativeScript app templates and it's inside the packages directory there. So if you open that packages directory, these are all of the templates that NativeScript CLI uses when you do um, NS create. And you can identify any of these by name. So for for instance, like template hello world TS, for example, that's a, a blank TypeScript based hello world project. Let's open that. And then inside the package JSON right there, if we open that, we'll see what the name of it is. And it's at native script slash template hello world TS and copy that name. And now let's go to NPM uh, JS and we'll actually find that actual template published on NPM. And when you choose it, let's go into the version history and let's just take a look at what we see there. And we can see some eight compatible versions are posted there and published. Always by default, NS Create will pull the latest version, but at any time, if you want to install for any reason an older version, you can always grab one. So 706 would be one that's already built and configured for NativeScript 7. So you can actually use that version number. We can take the name of that package and copy and paste that into our command for NS Create after the template. And then you can use the at symbol here to signal exactly what version. That's it right there. And 
um, just hit enter. So this is going to create a uh, native script seven project again, using the native script eight CLI. Um, this works. This will always work because this is actually what the CLI uses under the hood. It will always look up the template by name. Often the TS flag, NG flag, uh, view flag, react flag, those will look up the name of the packages and just pull the latest from NPM. So the template flag is really a way to signal a very specific template that's up on NPM and you can pull it down this way. Okay, gotcha. So right now it's going through the process of pulling down the template and creating a brand new project called old proj in this folder that we're in right now using native script 7 template. So even though we're running native script 8 CLI, we're still capable of creating a native script 7 project. That's correct. And the, again, the CLI, even though it's native script 8, the CLI is generally always updated to align with the latest versions of core and runtime just to be easier to understand. Um, but compatibility is always important with the CLI because um, even ourselves in day-to-day -day practice, we work on um, generally 6, 7, and 8 projects across all daily work. So generally, every CLI update is going to, as best as possible, maintain compatibility back to at least as low as six. And that may be for quite some time going into the future. So yeah, let's let's go inside that old proj and let's take a look at the package dependencies and, and what, we, what we have. All right, so I'll open this up in VS Code. Here we go. And we have our package.json file that we can look at. And you can see it pulled down that 706 version. And if you look at the dependencies and dev dependencies, you'll see it's using a typical NativeScript 7 version set here. So 710 on core, it's got seven of types, it's got the 4.0 of the webpack, and that was using 3.9 of TypeScript. So very typical vanilla NativeScript 7 project here. Um, and so to update a NativeScript 7 project, and this is the same even for a NativeScript 6 project, now we can just run NS migrate inside of this project. And if you want to make it extra clear, you could possibly commit uh, the changes and we could open it in GitHub Desktop. And after we run NS migrate, we can actually take a look at the changes that were made. Yeah, we could do that in desktop, but I mean, we're real developers. Let's do it right here on the command line, right? <laughs> Exactly. So um, get in it, right? We'll do yes. get in it. Okay. And then I'm going to have to use this tool just because it's so much easier. Let's just do an initial commit. And there we go. Oh, no changes to commit. I need to add everything, don't I? I, be star. I believe it might be added, but um, you can try to add it there. Okay. Get add star is not letting me add all that. Uh, do get add dot. Yeah. And get status. I think the um, NS create will already create an empty uh, commit when it sets it up, I believe. That's probably what happened. Okay, we're on man, master and nothing to commit. So from here, let's just run NS migrate. All right, I'm gonna go back to this command line because um, everybody was following along here, even though you could still do this in VS Code as well if you want to. So NS migrate should get us up to date. So this is going to go through and do several tasks. It will always back up a thing. So even though certain things are being changed around and things updated, it is going to uh, back certain things up like your old original Webpack config. The Webpack configs in NativeScript 8 are super simple. Now everything's sort of handled under the hood for all the default uh, standard cases. Um, the syntax in Webpack 5 really is quite a bit easier than it was in Webpack 4. And so the docs on Webpack on the new docs really reference a lot of the most useful uh, and common and things that people need to do in and above what's in those default uh, setups. So should make That's them easier good news to because, you know, Webpack, <laughs> it always confused me. Yeah, Webpack has always uh, been super confusing. I'd say on the native script side, the Webpack configs were really hard to maintain and they were really difficult, especially in migration stories, just trying to make sure people were on latest Webpack configs. So we really believe the new simplified Webpack config is going to remove a lot of that uh, trouble from the past. Yeah. So now the it's migration now. looks like it's done. Looks like it did uh, quite a few things there. We can either look at the Git history um, to take a look at what's changed. You can also poke around at the project, but right on the surface, we can see that the main was switched to app app.ts. This is actually one of the more important and kind of long uh, desired things with NativeScript in general. Many who've been dealing with NativeScript for several years probably know this, but the main had always pointed to a location that actually was not accurate. Um, the runtimes would actually deal with this sort of under the hood, but it was always confusing on the surface because app.ts is not relative to the package JSON in the app.js 
AWS that was always specified there was not exactly right there. It was often in a source or an app folder. And so it was always very confusing in terms of JavaScript projects in general. So NativeScript 8 kind of reigns in more consistency there and just standardization. So main actually points quite literally to the main file in this project, which is in app, and it even points to app.ts specifically. So just much more clear, much more one-to-one -one and standardized. Um, the other fundamental update there, core going to eight, uh, updated the dev dependencies there, and we can see it's using five uh, beta zero. There's been several betas released on there, but that tilde should pull down uh, the latest. And TypeScript is up to four now. It is four, and you can go to 4.1.0, probably in 8.1.0. We, we may bump it to 4.1.0. There's really no danger in going to 4.1 uh, in your own projects if you want. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. We also have a TS config change. TS config looks like just remove comments. That was probably a standardization cleanup there on the migration. This is the big one right here, right? This is the big one. So Webpack, of course, becomes super simple. Now, all of those rules that were the default rules that were in projects that uh, all NativeScript users were encountered with are all distilled, um, standardized in Webpack 5 uh, syntax, all in the common base. Wow. All the Webpack configs with new NativeScript 8 projects detect what project they are. So it actually derives a Webpack base based on the uh, front end flavor that is being combined with it. So all that's just sort of handled intelligently under the hood. So and you're telling me that you went from 338 lines down to, let's see, 10 lines? That's correct. Yeah, this this was huge. And big thanks to Igor primarily and uh, several other contributors who have really done a great job with the Webpack organization. Yes, thank you very much, Igor and the folks who did this. Uh makes a big difference so let's see the other the others there's really actually not a whole lot of other automatic migration changes that is in a nutshell all that it takes ns migrate takes care of the details now there's one thing that migrate does not handle and it's why we wanted to cover it in this video so if you open the project uh source which this template i think has an app folder yep. and inside there we've got app.css let's take a look at that so there is one key thing here in migration does not handle this automatically. It's possible in the future it might. Um, the reason it didn't is because depending on how big certain projects are and how uh, certain structures of CSS and SAS that some users may organize, wasn't guaranteed that it could clean up all cases. But this is probably the most important thing to understand with migrating to NativeScript 8 because it uses Webpack 5. It standardizes also some of these typical CSS SAS imports. The main thing is the tilde is no longer needed. And in fact, you would get an error if that tilde is there. So just simply remove those tildes from those imports. Should we run this and show the error so folks might recognize it if they run into it? Yeah, certainly. It's one of those easy to miss things. It is, it is. And um, typically in projects of this uh, sort, you can search your project for a tilde on an import, like a SAS import and search across your CSS or SAS to find them. Mm -hmm. And um, just simply removing that tilde is all you need to do. Okay, so if we run this on the simulator, that should uh, not work right away, but then we're gonna fix it up. And this is just so folks are familiar with this problem that they might run into. There it is. So there is the CSS error right there that you will get if you don't remove that tilde. And so yeah, importantly, it's just a Webpack uh, build error, pretty typical, but it doesn't state specifically um, really what the issue is there. So mm -hmm. it's a really uh, important just to understand that, that this error is directly related to the tilde. You just don't no longer need the tildes there with Webpack 5. All right, let's get rid of those tildes and run this one more time. I'm gonna terminate the process, control C, clean everything up and save this file and let's run it. Do I need to clean it or will it clean automatically? Um, I don't think you need to clean it. You can just run it, yeah. All right, let's Any do it. Uh, source file change like that, it's not gonna take a clean. While it's building, uh, there's this backup.json file. Can you talk a little bit about what that is? Migration backup is always going to collect any of the files that were either swapped or uh, changed with the migration. So you will always have a reference to your original code setup that was in there for anything that NS Migrate uh, changes. That'll always be the case going into the future. So any special rules or anything that um, you and your team are handling with your Webpack config, you can always reference in there and then you can view 
review the Webpack docs on docs.navescript.org um, to reference the Webpack 5 syntax for handling some of those, um, anything from adding uh, different activities to uh, adding different copy rules and that sort of thing. Gotcha, we've, okay. We've been using the new syntax now for quite some time and um, it really is quite a bit simpler. It's a bit easier to work with, definitely. Okay, well, it looks like it um, started up and there is the app running and we didn't get any errors this time. That's good and um, I think that's pretty much it. That is it. That is NS Migrate, uh, Navescript 7 and Navescript 8. Pretty straightforward. Probably the biggest thing to keep in mind is the CSS SAS import tildes. Just remove those tildes in your code and um, everything should work. Outside of that, as far as plugins related, if you're going from 7 to 8, you're probably not going to see any plugin related issues. Um, there were really no breaking changes along that sort of stuff. As far as package JSON, you know, if for any reason the package JSON didn't get updated for main, that's one thing to look for and confirm. Just make sure the package JSON is actually pointing to the literal path of where your uh, bootstrap file is. So main right there, app.app.ts. Again, much easier in NavScript 7 because it points quite to the literal file of that. So um, that'll, that'll be the standard going forward. Okay, gotcha. And that's this file right here, app and app.ts. This is the bootstrapping file. Okay, well, that's that does it, folks. Thank you so much, Nathan. We look forward to doing this again. And uh, for our next video, maybe we'll do native script six to eight uh, to get some of those folks that are on even older versions out and um, migrated. So thank you so much for hanging out with us and we'll see you soon. Thanks, everybody. All right, bye-bye.